If you had the opportunity to live in a children's wonderland, would you choose anywhere else? We don't just say, we do. It's the Stain City Way. Good afternoon, my name is Anilem Doda and this is Real Talk live on SABC3 where the stage is yours. Listen, it definitely feels as though winter has an even firmer grip on us in this chilly Monday, which is why we're bringing you a little extra sauciness, a little extra spice, some sass to heat up your screens. We've just come out of the biggest weekend in music with the 30, 23rd rather annual summers that took place at Sun City this past weekend. Congratulations to all the winners. That, but that being said, the red carpet is also very, very important, okay? It's, it's an important part of any award night. So for the first time on the show, we're going to do some fashion policing today on Real Talk with my peoples. First one up, the most impressive style entrepreneur in town, founder of La Manche Boutique Clothing, Sejo Manche. My second lady is radio and TV personality who is also a fashionista in her own right. Co-host on the bridge on Metro of M, Lerato Hanyako. Ladies, welcome. Hey. Look, Sorry, you, I love clapping to myself. I know, you did it last time oh, yeah. as well. I remember because I was congratulating you on the drive show. Yes. Like, and I was just like, okay, that yeah. is so cute. Thank you for having me. First us. things first, thank you for looking good thank whilst you. we do this for because, you know, you don't want to look like, you know, we trying. We yeah. talking about. And then about. you're telling everyone else that, like, yeah. oh. Okay. Yeah, you look a bit dodgy. You could have done this differently. Summer's happened. You were there. Yes. Did you go? No, I didn't. Ah, I didn't. You were there. What was the general feeling of the night? It was, uh, it was great, you know, um, completely different vibe from the past couple of years. Yeah. I, I felt like there, was a, there wasn't as many people this year. But I mean, mm. watching So Measy and Do Me, uh, you know, kind of completed everything. But yeah. otherwise, it was a, a bit of a different atmosphere, but it was great. It was, I loved, I loved the fashion this year. Yeah. yeah. I love yeah. that people are getting yeah. out of their, you know, comfort shells, zone comfort and, zone. Yeah. Yeah. And Skolopat. I always look forward okay. to Skolopat. Okay. <laughs> I really do. Guys. I do. I'm like, a fan of Skolopat because I really look forward to what she's going to rock on the red carpet because trust me, she just, she, she actually does get the attention that she, you know, she what wants. What does Skolopat do? Yeah. Uh, she Who is sings. she? <laughs> she sings. Skolopat sings. No, but my thing is I want to see her sing. Yeah, okay. because it should be more about Twitter the music page. than yeah. about what she's trying to push. I mm. understand that people want to trend so badly, yeah. but people must dress the way they want to be you, dressed. If she yeah. did that so is, and showed us a talent, I wouldn't mind it. I just exactly. mind that now you're taking attention exactly. away from people who are actually exactly. there yeah. to celebrate talent. But you spoke about Samizi and Dumi. Let's start off with them. Mm. Uh, let's have a look at their outfits. Our host, uh, I know uh, Dumi, that suit, girl. I, to I, me, looks amazing. She looks great. My jaw was on the floor. Absolutely love her. So, Meezy, those Gucci's, he told me about them before, and I totally love the platforms. Platforms love, are in, yes, and I love yes, the looks. Yes. Do we like some Meezy shoes because they're Gucci or because cause they look like the Spice Girls? No, because mm -hmm. they look like mine, actually. Oh, I have got them. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember the Spice Girls shoes? Yes, yes but Spice Girls are about back. recreating yeah. trends. Okay. So, okay. yeah. All right, uh, Dumi's suit, absolutely wonderful. So nice, fitted, everything. I feel like Dumi's dress, this one, the, 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 the ball gown should have been with... Matched up with Somizi's metallic look. And then exactly. when he did the suit, she exactly. should have taken the suit there. Exactly. But I can't fault it. And obviously, yeah. Somizi, you can't fault him because yes. he's crazy like that. He was saying people are going to rip him off for that suit. Why? Because I absolutely Why? love it. That is a love beautiful it. print. And you know what I love about it? It represents his personality. Yes. yes. And did you yes. see the mask that he had on? The Margiela inspired in, one? Oh, my God. <gasps> Magella did that like at 2015 on the runway. So seeing Magella, Mason yeah. Magella. Okay. So seeing him with that suit, with the total look, I was like, we have reached another level of fashion. And in South his Africa. shoes, his shoes, yeah. remember? Camera zoom in. <laughs> Red yes. yes, love them. Only so the high, can pull the them high. Off. I was like, I yeah. want those shoes. Yeah, yeah, I do. So are we giving our host a thumbs up? Yes, No, definitely. they get, they get I 10 I think they did well. I think Dumi looked amazing. amazing. Yeah. And they did mm. wonderful things with her hair and her face and all of that. So, yeah, well and done to them. And her weight looks amazing. Yes. Right? She looks yes. amazing. Yeah. And yeah. she had said that, you know, no one wanted to dress her because she was big. But, okay, now she's here. So, yeah. let's move on quickly before we run out of time. Uh, to the guys. Uh, who are we going with? I think it was Questa. 
Yes, so Questa and uh, who's Strava. the guy? Strava, Strava and, and then Mampinja. And Pinja. Yeah. Yeah. Mam, you know, I had a pajama party and I handed out robes, right? Oh, Mampinja no. didn't come to the party, but you but obviously hey. got the robe. <laughs> Listen, you know, he kind of reminds you of B.I.G. That actually yes. looks like B.I.G. and Lil' Kim. Really? And, and, and Wait, Babes O'Toole. That's, that's, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, I promise you. They actually, they remind me of B.I.G. and Lil' yes. Kim. And I love the fact that he's also, he's not, he's not a typical Guaito artist anymore. Yeah. He's playing around with, yeah. you know, fabrics and the velvet. Velvet is in, you know, and I really, really enjoy Him and it. I, I look like we, his and hers. Yeah. yeah, yeah well, enough, okay. <laughs> You're also wearing velvet, so <laughs> might as well, yeah. I, I like, uh, who's the guy in the... In, in, Java. No, oh, the, the blonde dress. He's, um... Questa. His name. No, that's not... Questa's no. the one in the middle with the suits. I'll tell yeah. you what his name is now. He's oh. actually a producer. He is... Saudi. Saudi. Saudi, Saudi, Saudi looks Saudi. like he went to go buy Manchis and somebody said, let's go to the summer and then he ended up on a red carpet but I like it I like it but it's I, music guys I really it's like yeah. it it's music yeah. it's lifestyle yes. so you sooner or later guys you're going to have to set a standard though are we formal are we casual what are we you casual you are whatever you want to be and yeah. this is the beauty of fashion is that you can come in whatever look at um, can I come on okay we're running out of time next one sorry <laughs> sorry uh, next one the guys I love Kuli. Oh. Kuli looks amazing. I love my Mangosa. Kuli. The sports lux look, the colors, he looks amazing. Tato's normal for me. I've seen that on him before. Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree with you. It's I was very a normal bit disappointed in Tato. And the I've shoes seen that look need on to him go. So many times. Yeah. I actually mm -hmm. didn't see the shoes. Are they like white? They need to go. Okay, they need to go. Okay. Okay. And smash is, <laughs> it's smash, you know. It yeah. Smash looks like he's going for grocery shopping. I'm sorry. Who? In Who's a jacket that? like that. Smash. Yes, that's how I know. Ah, with green pants like that. Honey, where exactly? But two seconds ago, it was music. <laughs> okay, let's go to the ladies. We're running out of time. Guys, we should have spoken so much. These are my best dressed men, but Dira takes it for me. Dira, Dira is the best dressed man. Amazing. Dira takes it. Cat, I've seen him in the, the tuck so many yeah. times, yeah. you know, a bit predictable. Dira takes it for he me. He looks yeah, amazing. definitely does. He Namiz is the best dressed for me. I love Nomuzi. I mean, all three girls look absolutely amazing, but Enrich, this one yeah. was standing out for me because I've never seen True. her with the I want before. Jessica to mess with different silhouettes, though. The whole yes, tight thing, yes. it's, I've seen it on her you before. You know, she yeah. channels the whole first lady classy look, so I think that's why she wants to keep it silhouetted. No, and you must mess around with others. Boring. It's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. It's the same it thing. It's boring because already we know what she's going to I look know what like your body looks like. Yeah. Now play with it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm. All right, So next. Nomuzi definitely for me. Yeah, yeah Nomuzi looks amazing. Ah. Uh, who else? I'm Who waiting else? for Who the else? next one. Oh, guys, our equipment from, from TV Baghdad. <gasps> Nina. I like Nina. Yeah. I like the whole Bond girl thing. Uh, K Naomi is drowning in material. She's I don't like it at all. Drowning in material, there was correct. There was too much fabric, and the yeah. colors just washing her out. Yeah, yeah. Kaylee must have lost weight because that dress looks heavy. Listen, <laughs> I saw Kaylee. I was walking behind up. her, and there was literally like 15 people holding her. Really? Trail. But, but I love amazing. that. I love it. She, she uh, you know, channeling amazing. the whole Rihanna. I think yes. Rihanna wore that two years Met ago. Met to the Met. Met yes. Yeah. Yes. I loved it. She pulled it off, and and nice to see Kaylee in that. And also nice to see her like looking demure and like. And yes. red carpet. Yeah, yeah. Okay, next one. I think the next one was. Let me go on here. Oh, Nina also looked very gorgeous. Oh yes, Masichaba. there we are. Masichaba. Nude love. And Rato. You know what? What I love about LKG. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh wow. Are you want to talk about yourself? Oh, that person. Okay. She's talking about herself. Yes. What I love about her. Okay, back to Lula. Lutando. <laughs> Masichaba. For me, it steals this one. Not for me. Yeah. Really. No. I think she, she she looks like she could have been Biggie's third wife. I think she's, she looks like a mannequin. She's so beautiful and she's so tall. She can do so much with her body. Just wearing that faux but leather that to looks... To me, that makes her risky because she's not doing the same thing with that... If she had showed me abs, I would have been bored. I'd be like, Lutando, I've seen your abs. <laughs> so it's it's enough. So it was a different look. Yeah, yeah. I get what she's... I partly get what she's saying, yeah. So it was... She's not predictable also. Maschaba, uh, Kateria and George, she looked Mas absolutely Chava amazing. Looks amazing. Yeah, so love, amazing. love that. And she carried it so well. Oh, so, yeah. so well. Okay. And you LKG, look, you look absolutely look amazing. I mean, Lerato Kanyako... <laughs> What can you say? Love that Out of That's time, who was your best dress quickly? <laughs> Myself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, I, for me, the ladies, yeah. right? I'd go with um, Nomuzi. Nomuzi. Nomuzi was Nomuzi. definitely best dress for me. Nomuzi, Nomuzi, yeah. well done, yes. girl. You went best dress. Yes. And then for the fellows, it was Tira. 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 Yeah, Tira. 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 Haro Redders. <laughs> Thank you very much to the ever so stylish fashion mogul, Sejo Manche of La Manche Clothing, for joining us, for doing some fashion uh, policing with the Summers. The Durban July is next. They're going to be back here again so Yay! we can talk about that. What will you be wearing? Because we'll be there watching. After the break, Lirato and I, LKG, do some one-on-one. -on -one. Join us. <laughs>
And welcome back. Thank you so much for staying us with Real Talk right here on SABC3. My guest today, self-proclaimed hustler, a trait she says she inherited from her mother and one that she proudly owns. She's worked hard since the days of being Miss Jam Ali. Oh, yeah. As well as Mr. Weto in 2002 and 2005, respectively. These days, you can hear her on Metro FM alongside Dineo Ranago on the bridge. And on Friday night, she sets the weekend tone on SABC One's live amp. She's also one of the most in-demand DJs around and I have danced to her okay oh the girl will make you dance she is Lerat Hanyago welcome back to the show <laughs> you were clapping for yourself the last time as well. Listen, you have to. You have to. If nobody claps for you, you got to have to You're clap like, for you. If okay. you don't love yourself first, who's going to love you? Who yeah. is going to do it? Yeah. Miss Jem Ailey. No, but like, why are we going back there? Do you know, do you know why I want to go there? It's because when you enter pageants, right? Yeah, yeah. Surely it's because you like, you know you're pretty, right? So no. when did you know you're like, ah? Not even. Can I tell you, like... Throughout high school, I was, I always thought I'm the ugly duckling. I never thought I was pretty. I was very tomboyish. Uh -huh. um, I was always so reserved. Like I was a boy at heart. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's just my mom got me into beauty pageants and more of a, you know, for me to, to kind of build up my self-confidence and nice. also to, to maybe to become a bit of a lady here and uh -huh. there and learn more about grooming. But then you win prizes and you're like, well, this pretty yeah. thing is working out for me. Yeah, gem blaster, you know. <laughs> chocolate. Chocolate. And I was like, okay, this is great. So yeah, and then we moved on to Miss Soweto, uh, which was probably the biggest pageant that I won. Did you not and, win a car? Um, Yes, I want a car, uh. and uh, that was a big that was a big thing. But I think the biggest for me was how many doors actually have you know opened for me. People have no idea how big Miss Soweto is. Um, well, then I do, now there's a lot of you know, there's a lot of things happening. But then yeah. for me, I took it as a but I mean was, there's, was goal. there's so many people that live in Soweto. If you're gonna be Miss Soweto, it, representing it, like it's naturally a big thing. Exactly, absolutely, and that's how I took it. You know, representing so many people yeah. from a township. There was a time when Soweto was one of the ten. Was, because South Africa would be the nine provinces and then the 10th one would be Miss Soweto. Yeah. Why are you sad when I say that? Oh, I thought you were going to go to Miss South Africa because I have a story about that. Yeah. Oh, no. Like... Come with it. <laughs> Weren't you too short? Because you look like you're too short. Yeah, to I actually Africa. had an automatic uh, entry to Miss South Africa. Because of Miss Soweto. Because of Miss Soweto. Yeah. And they said I was too short. But now I'm taller than Joan and so many other, uh, other ladies that were before me and after me. It was, uh, it was one of those things. But I never took it to heart because I feel, I've, I always believe that if, uh, if something was meant to, uh, for you, it'll happen. If it wasn't, God will somehow protect you yeah, from I it. I don't think I'd be okay with Miss South Africa format DJing for me. Ima that would <laughs> you know be great. I mean? That would be great. Imagine that. I, with your crown Africa there and your a swag, you know. You, you know. I think it would be it's great. Like the after party, don't worry, guys. <laughs> I got this. You know, I, I get shot with South Africa and I DJ at the after party. <laughs> but I, that was way after, yeah. So when were you a flight attendant? I was a flight attendant during Miss Soweto, funny enough. Oh, wow. Yes. But what does that do to you, though, that you like, I'm, because I mean, the, personally, this would be me as I'm yeah. serving you yes. your beef there. Wait a second, Mr. Weto now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was so awkward. I didn't realize how awkward it would be until. You know, I was on the, on the front of a Sowetan yes. newspaper one time and, you know, passengers were walking in with the newspaper and they're like, how? But is this the same? What's going on? Yeah. How does this thing work? And, uh, but it was great because uh, for me, it was more of a, yo, you know, I'm Miss Soweto, but also there's a real life to it. I have to, I make, need to work. I have to make money. I have to do this thing that I loved then, which was being, you know, were flying and traveling the world. You, and you flew for SA Express, right? Yes, yes. And I have a theory about SA Express. Because I do. I really do. Because <laughs> I fly SA Express a lot because I'm always going home to Mtata. Yes. Or like yes. little towns. You yeah, know, yeah, that's, yeah. that's yeah. the one you uh -huh. use. And little towns have got like these... These shy men with lots of money. <laughs> mm -hmm. I wouldn't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. So, yeah. <laughs> you're very beautiful. These men are flying. Do rich men not like hit on you whilst you and air hostess and want to like save you from this job? Oh, they did. I think I had the, there was a French guy that I once met from a DRC, Congolese guy, uh -huh. who was like, you need to quit this job. I'll take care of you. I'll take care of you. You know, girl. come back with me to DRC, <laughs> have children with me. It happens very often, but most of the time, they probably do that with every flight attendant. Oh. For me, when a guy hits on me in a plane, it's like he probably does it all the time. So I don't take them seriously. So you never paid attention nah, to Nah, no. I've never, I never dated a passenger. I've never dated a passenger. Is there a policy against dating passengers? No, no, no. Absolutely not. But it was so just So you can me. slip one your number in the service you with can. the nuts and water. Yeah, I probably did it once or twice. And? 
No, nothing happened. <sighs> it was just for fun, Jay. You and your girls there in the cabin, you're like, I yeah, talk about for it. See, for see. Yeah, but you see the same passenger with the girlfriend <laughs> the following day or the wife, then it's like kind of awkward. <laughs> now you don't know where to look. Ex now you don't know where now to look. Now you're throwing her food at her like me. Here's your food, wife. <laughs> Actually. So, no, no, no. Yeah. But it was, a, it was a great time in my life. I got mm. to, you know, to really get to know myself a bit more. Yeah. And also appreciate a lot of things about me. But also that made me realize that uh, it was not really my passion. Because then I started falling out of love with it. With regards to, I started booking off a lot. Uh. That's when I was doing so with a TV. Yeah, yeah. And I was just not interested anymore. I, I used to wake up and be miserable. And Do you still have I your just, uniform? No. Yeah, no, you have to take it back. I really? Take it back. doesn't yeah. belong to you? No, it doesn't belong to you. When you resign, you take it back. Wow, that's like being a policeman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like Give a security your measure gun. thing because you could oh. easily wear it and go rob a bank or whatever. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So you or have slip to take into it back. a plane. Or exactly. Yeah. Because access. You know, yes, yes. So, so they take your permit, point. access card, everything. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And now when you fly, and obviously business class. Hey. Really? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she just let me sink there by myself. I'm like, hey. Oh, we really? do. <laughs> you <laughs> that girl. You just let me like stand out by myself. I'm just saying. Yeah. So once in a while. We fly business, yes, yeah, but not when you're all the going time. Going on business, yes, yes. So now you're there. Do you still see like your colleagues? You're like ah, all the time, really? all the time, and and it's so nice because most of them are really nice, still nice to me. And they're so sometimes proud of you. they, yeah, they're really proud of me. They always get me so emotional because they'll talk about my journey. How there was a time when I used to be so miserable and I just wanted to leave mm. because I had this thing that I wanted to do, and that was television. Yeah. You know, I had deprived myself from doing so many things that I absolutely loved. Uh, only because the most important thing for me then was just to make money, you know. Okay. And um, but yeah, and one day I just decided this is it. I'm done. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if I'm going to be making money for the next year. But uh, I'm quitting this. I'm, out of I'm here. following my heart. I'm going to try this thing out. If it works, great. If it doesn't, God, it's all right. I know you still have my back. So how long into Soweto TV do you then leave the job? So I was, I think it was a year actually. I did flying and Soweto TV yeah. and Miss Soweto all at a go, by the okay. way. Okay. Yeah, there was a time when I would leave uh, Soweto TV at like nine o'clock in the evening because then it was live. I used to have a show called Open Door Policy. Yeah. And then drive back to Boxburg. I was living in Boxburg, get home at about, I think, midnight and have to wake up at four o'clock in the morning to, to go, go do fly. a flight. Four legs. So that's four trips and then come back again and do so on TV again. And it just started getting tiring, you know. But and, um, were you making like a lot of money or was it just like- From where? Okay, because the thing is I know- <laughs> No, I was flying domestic. Domestic doesn't have a lot of money at all. Mm. International, yes, they do with their SNTs, the dollars, yes. which they're currently fighting for. I'm sure you've I seen know. in the news, yeah. I know. Um, but um, domestic flights, no, there isn't a lot of money. So, but I was making more money from emceeing gigs here and there, ah. you know, at freshers and things like mm. that. And, uh, but definitely not making money from Soweto TV. I worked for five years of Soweto TV, four years without make, getting a salary. And she wasn't telling anyone this. Her mom thinks she was getting paid. Me not back at the ranch. Dolo low cash. Sorry, mommy. <laughs> yeah, okay. Here on Real Talk, we don't believe in Blue Mondays, which is why we kick off every week with a chance for you to win a 5,000 Rands e gift voucher. Just follow the details on screen right now to enter. We'll be back with LKG after the break. Welcome back. In her own words, Lerato Hanyako has said, every time I make a move, everyone goes insane. She is no stranger to being talked about, and it's most times good, but she's no stranger to her fair share of criticism and even the insults. You and Twitter, right? And I, and I like it, you always said up front, you're like, oh, Twitter's going to start on me. Do you yeah. like wake up anticipating, ba? okay, he's a nigga. Listen, I believe, honestly, that yeah. there are people, there are groups that have been hired just to come for me. Because really? I can literally go on Twitter and say, I'm about to sneeze. There's going to be someone who's going to get offended. When I bless you, can Yes, yeah, yeah. How dare you sneeze? There yeah. are like 10,000 children who haven't eaten this morning. Do you not think you know, they say that because they know sooner or later they're going to get a response out of you? Um, before, yes. But I, it's, 
you know, right now I try not to react. Once once in a while there and there, you know, I'll say, you know what, like you need to calm down. Like yesterday someone said I was dressed like I was going to a, a funeral at the at the at the, the summers. summers. And I replied with a, Well, you look like you're wearing a lizard on your avatar. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now everyone was going insane. That's funny though. People I like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I have the funny side of me, but people do get offensive sometimes, like really, really uh, malicious. Mm. But those I try not to respond to. Yeah. There are people who really dig deep, who say something where I'm like, but were you even thinking when you typed this? You know? And, and also, there's no way of you not seeing it because... Yeah. And cause because you, they tag you. They want you to see it. But also... Outside of tagging, yeah. I like to be on Twitter. Yeah. Like, I think it's the last thing I do when I go to bed. Yes, it's the first yes, thing I do when I wake yes. up. Because I want to see what the world Both is talking about. Both of us. About. Oh, definitely. And, yeah. you know, and yeah. just because I think South Africans are funny. Yeah. So, you know, just I follow normal people. Yeah. It's just nice to hear what they're saying. Yeah. So, I'm going to see what you're saying. So, yeah. why, why would you do that? But I, I've picked up that a lot, as you've grown up, mm. you, you're just responding less. Yeah, no, I am responding less because I feel also it's, I'm trying to move away from the negativity because it yeah. does it does wear you down. And also I feel like, True. you know, when the second that you retweet, then everyone sees it. And it's aware. Though, and everyone is aware. Yeah. Especially with things that are really, really malicious. And the next thing it ends up on some blog and it becomes yeah. a big thing. So I, I, I'm trying really hard to avoid that. I think I've been doing an awesome job. And also I don't take it to heart because most of the people that actually say nasty things um, are hurting themselves. Are hurting themselves. Yeah. Not even that. Actually, most of the time they don't even mean it. It's just to get a couple of RTs or to trend or and you attention. know to be part of this hype machine. I call it the hype machine because everyone wants to be part of it. So yeah. But I mean, having and I mean, you, I, I read somewhere that you went to fifty auditions. Yeah. Before you got is it Soweto TV? Well, it's probably more than that. You lost when, count. While I was with Soweto while, TV. Whilst you were there, because you oh, just yeah. wanted to get out of there. Yeah. Why did you want to get out of there? Because your show was. You know, for Soweto TV, I used to be like, yeah. this girl, though, for the, Soweto TV, honestly, and I'm not looking yeah. down on Soweto no, TV. No, 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 I know what you mean, yes. But it's, it, it's, it, it was a bit of a household name. No, know? it definitely was, and I didn't expect it. I mean, towards the end, when uh, SABC1 kind of, you know. She's yeah. ours now. She's ours now. Yeah. Um, the LKG show is probably sitting on, like, 600, 600 700,000 700, uh, viewers. viewers. And I definitely did not expect that. So it was a... Uh, Sure, it, it was very hard to let go of it uh, uh, because it was something that I had built from my heart, you know. Wait, and um, you're giving them 700,000 viewers, they're not paying you? No, no, no. I got paid towards the end of Soweto TV. Oh, and when okay. I say paid, it wasn't even a lot of money. I mean, what we're getting right now. Yeah. But, you know, I, 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 it didn't bother me that much because for me, it was all about really following what your I love. passion. My passion and trying to build this thing. And that honing I really skill. Be, exactly, exactly. You know, getting the experience so that when I go out there to the big world, you know, I'm really well equipped and I know more about the industry. Mm. And that's what I always, uh, you know, I always say I appreciate Soweto TV so much because of that. I got to know my craft. I learned so many things about mm. the industry from being a producer, cameraman, you know, wh what everyone does. Do everyone's a, it's like community yeah. radio. Oh, right? absolutely. You, you learn marketing. Everything. You, if, if the everything. movie does not there, yeah. you're reading news, you know? It's a training ground, yeah. you know? And I'll always be grateful to them. Will you ever go back to talk show life, though? Oh, yes. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> You know, I'm just saying out there, welcome to um, Real Talk with the uh, LKG. Because I was retired. No, but definitely not now, though. Not now, um, because I'm really enjoying. You see, everything that I'm doing right now yeah. is things that I had really prayed for in the past mm. couple of years. But mm. because, you know, God then was still prepping me and taking his time with me. You know, everything happens in God's time. It's never your time. Yeah. So, um, you know, a friend of mine was saying the other day, but all of these you could have done in your 20s. And I'm like, but it doesn't, there's no age limit. If God says I should be doing this right now, yeah. then it was meant to be that, you know, it was meant to happen now. I cannot question, you know, where he places me right now. I should just take it and, and be grateful do it. and do it. Absolutely. But I also like the comfort you have because, I mean, you're not in your 20s, but you do live, which is a show that is, yes. you know, Yes. kind of directed at the yeah. 20s and yeah. you just kind of own it and yeah for me because men are allowed to do that men can be 90 exactly you know and on live music and, show. and as soon as you're a woman it's yes. like ah, yes but, she should be at home cooking or she should be a, a, doing a, a talk show as yeah. the nine day, she tweeted something that was really really 
I thought it was amazing where she also spoke about age limit. Why do we put age to every single thing? Because, yeah. you know, our successes don't come at the same time. We need to remember that all the time. Yeah. So take your time, take your pace. It's and what I I'm, love. I'm enjoying my space. Yeah. I'm loving it. I'm so comfortable and I'm so grateful, most importantly. This is by far the happiest I've seen you. I know. Everyone says that. You probably like... For the past weekend, you're probably yeah. like the fifth person. Really? It, yeah. I said, you look so happy. And I am. I really am. From radio to TV mm. to just me, you know, my family, my friends, my personal life. I'm really, really grateful. And um, yeah. So what's, what, what's, what's your highlights? Because you said you used to hate going to work like when you were a, a cabin crew. What's your highlight now? What do you love going to live or radio? Oh, no, you can't do that I to know. me. <laughs> I hate it when they you ask can't. that question. Yeah, I, I hate that do question. You know what? My answer changes every interview. No, 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 mine does also. So I'm going to say it because I'm sitting here at television. <laughs> 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 but I mean, it differs. It depends. I, I, I have a different love for radio and I have a different love for, 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 for television. Mm. I, I respect both crafts, I, you, know, uh, you know, TV and radio. And um, I just love them both. I love everything that I do. And um, I said, if I don't love something, I get rid of it. It's like acting. You know, I tried a bit of acting. In Mubango, and I, right? Yeah, on Mubango. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I, not so long ago I tweeted, I said, I'll never go back to it because I don't have the love for it. I don't have the passion for it. So I would rather someone who has the actual passion takes that position where I was because uh, I'd feel like I'm taking it for granted. This is true. Yeah, this no, absolutely. Yeah, how's, absolutely. How's working with Dinao? Dinao is a dynamite, a live wire. She, okay, besides the fact that she's a sister, she is so... I think we need a new word for it. She's amazing though. She's an yeah. incredible, she's a sister. We have amazing chemistry together. We have an, un an understanding and I love the fact that we are the same age. So, you know, immaturity plays a huge role when it comes to that. You and know, contentment. We, we are so content. Both of us actually, we are at a point in our lives where we're so content and we are so happy and we are so comfortable yeah. with who we are. So it just, it works so well together. Why does Drum Magazine say you guys are fighting? Oh, damn. I saw, but you see us, we both like rolled our eyes. What I love about Dino and I is that the week that we started doing the bridge, yes. I said to her, I said, now you oh, know. Oh, that week. Yeah, that week. <laughs> Awkward. But <laughs> that hectic week. Probably We're going to talk the about The most it. hectic week of my life. I can imagine. You <laughs> must have been crying. Um, I, I, Stress levels were like, yeah, I mate. <laughs> but it's one of those things. But <laughs> I, I, we spoke about it. I said to her, you know they're going to try and make us fight. They got, they're going to make us... Uh, Try and make us fight, basically, you know, girls. because we are girls. Mm. I said, it might happen now or it will probably happen later. And when they called us, she actually called me on Saturday. I was in Sun City sleeping. She's mm. like, and I'm like, yo, Dini, what's up? She says, yeah, I'm just going to call from uh, Sunday Sun. And I'm like, oh, is it happening? She's like, yeah. I said, you know, I'd rather it happen now than we get over and done with it. But my cry go. is, because I look at my radio team, yeah. right? We fight. We do. Though. Why? And why am I not allowed to fight yes, with, with yes, Frankie yes, or Alex yeah, or Tim Begile? Yeah, but that's yeah. the point because we're different personalities and we're building a show. Absolutely. We fight, but we put yeah. the mics on and yeah. we work. Why are we not allowed to fight? Why? Why is it an event that you guys are fighting? And it wasn't even. We haven't had a fight where it's like I'm gonna beat you up or <laughs> no. It's just disagreements. Like you and I sitting here, yeah. maybe we're looking at something and I say, Nah, I'm not really crazy about that. Oh, you are. Okay, moving right along. And then after that, we are chatting. We're the best of mates. Life. You know, it's. It was yeah. just. It's, it's actually fake news. Look, I Not like, even worth entertaining. Yeah. yeah, I like you, but I think if it did come to blows, my man is on Dinell. Um, no, I'm taller than Dinell. <laughs> really? Yeah. Have you seen Dinell? <laughs> Did, have you watched a reality show? <laughs> She's actually quite a softie, hey? Oh, yeah, she's not, Dino. no. Do you, know, do you know, I don't, and she's not a fighter. So you're saying she that? She comes across, no, she comes across like a fighter, but yeah. she's not. She, she's very, she's, she, she wouldn't. But you are, you like, don't. No, me, I'm the kid, you know, like, <laughs> what, what's happening? <laughs> joking, no, I'm not. I'm joking. Okay, no, no. <laughs> listen, she's not going anywhere, which means you have to stay right where you are. I'm back with LKG after the break. <laughs> And welcome back to Real Talk. Today on the couch is radio and TV personality Lirato Khanyako. As the saying goes, when life gives you lemons, just make lemonade. And Lirato definitely made some of the sweetest in town. I'm having so much fun. I can, we're even getting louder. We bring those botala, yeah. the, the <laughs> Yeah, Mugel, Mugel. Yeah. It's wrong. <laughs> so let's talk about 
um, I heard in an interview with Pearl and Amon. Yeah. And I loved what you said. You're like, you know what? It was nice to be the underdog, but I'm no longer the underdog. Yeah. And I'm tired of being, you know, claiming this thing because yeah. then it gives people a reason to constantly feel like I'm... I'm Unbox me. Yes. Yes. And yes. you're scrambling. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What made you make that decision that I'm not the underdog anymore? It, it's so funny. I posted something on Twitter. I think it was last on Instagram last year. And I, and I captioned it, uh, underdog. And someone from America actually put a comment there talking about, you know, how it is so bad to call yourself an underdog mm. and because then you're boxing yourself, you're putting yourself in, in a corner. When you start doing that, because you're putting it out there, people out there, people start believing it mm. and you become that. And then people want you to stay in that corner to a point where when you want to flourish now, it's like, you can't, you know, you've been an underdog, so you, stay in that you position. You said that's who you oh, are. And that's, you, you know what I mean? So that's why I've moved away from calling myself an underdog. And I'm just a uh, Lerato. It's so I call myself mother now. Mother. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Do you know what's funny for me is because when that whole open up the industry thing happened, you were one of the people that was targeted and like, ah, Lerato, you know, you know, Lerato, Pearl, Bonang. Yeah. Uh, other yeah. Pearl, guys. Yeah. And I was like, how are you guys targeting Lerato Khanyako when you call her the underdog? Because surely an underdog means that she still needs to get more jobs. Exactly. Absolutely. And th at that time, I only had one gig on TV. Really? That's why I went for them. I said, yo, actually, I've been hustling for five years. I wasn't, get I wasn't getting paid for four years doing a TV show. Mm. Used up my pet petrol. I nearly lost my car. My car nearly got repossessed because I wasn't getting an income. You know. So you are in no... You know, you can't be saying I don't deserve to be where I am. Who are you to question where mm. I am right now? You know, and most of them know how hard I've worked. But you know, black Twitter, they will always disregard or put that in a corner, especially if they want to make you feel otherwise. Yeah. As a, but I appreciate that there's a lot of people that, you know, appreciate and know my journey where I started off. You know, because and you had 700,000 viewers. Yeah. They, they may not be tweeting, but they're supporting oh, and they're absolutely. watching. So I just feel like... But you know what? The real people are not on Twitter. <laughs> this is what I've learned for the past couple of months. The people you with get jobs? So, I get so much love outside of yeah. Twitter. And we, we are constantly on Twitter that we start believing that this is it. Like, this is the real world. This is actually the real world. If you are hated on Twitter, everybody hates you outside. Never. But when I go to gigs, now I'm on tour with, uh, you know, a certain alcohol brand and the amount of love that I get, the people that, that actually attend these events, it's incredible. So I actually don't even take it to heart anymore. Yeah. Oh, okay. So let's talk about that week, that fateful week. And was it beginning of April? <sighs> when <not> she's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, by the way, people are asking why are you wearing a ring there? Are you engaged? I've been wearing this ring for a year. Okay. Yes, it's back to very the week. Big. Thank you. It could have sunk the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> Probably did. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah that's, that's, that's a that's, gift from a friend. Is it? It's beautiful. <laughs> so you say you still don't know what happened there. You you got a show with Bonang and you guys got announced and then the next thing Yeah. Bonang's like, I'm not here anymore. I actually, I, I don't, I think I'm still very much puzzled about it. I haven't spoken to her since then. I haven't seen her since then. But really? uh, the last thing, yeah, the last thing I said to her, and she'll say it, uh, because she got up after the show and she said, um, I'm resigning. And, you know, I said, whoa, okay. And I remember walking with her outside and I said to her, don't ever make emotional decisions. Yeah. I said, wait for a week, see how you feel, feel it out, and then come back and make a decision. That's what I said to her. And she will tell you. I mean, if she wants yeah, to. Yeah, no, she is. will. And that's the last time I spoke to her. And the next thing I just saw tweets and, yeah, that she was gone. Why do you think she resigned? I have no idea. Uh, no, no, I'm not going to speak. I didn't ask you why, do you, why did she why resign? Why do I think? What do you, th why do you think she resigned? Um, I think that would be very unfair of me. I can't think okay. for her. She knows why she made that decision and I respect her. I mean, she's a grown woman. She was, she's allowed to make her own decisions mm -hmm. and uh, I respect her. When did you know you're doing a show with her? I, with everyone else by Friday. But you see, I was available for the meeting. Oh. So when I read newspaper articles saying that I knew a week before, I was like, I don't know who's feeding these people these lies. Because yeah. we all knew on Friday, it was a very last minute thing. The lineup was very, very yeah, last minute. I know that. No one was... Uh, you know, uh, everyone was included. It was all about who can make time. Mm. So I made time on Saturday and then they told me and I was like, taken aback, like, okay, is she going to be okay with it? I like the idea. Mm. I'm always willing to work with different people, mm. you know, because uh, sometimes it can get a bit monotonous and I'm always willing to try 
different experiences with different people, especially mm. people that have been doing radio for such a long time because I've only been doing it for two years. So grasping yeah. from different people, yeah. I absolutely love it. And that's what I enjoy with Dinero right now and previously with, with more Flavor. Absolutely loved it. Yeah. He's, he's my little sweetheart. Love Isn't you, he just... He's, he's, I did he's enjoy listening to you guys. But yeah. to be fair, I would have also enjoyed you and Bonang. So, because yeah. I also said to her and I was like, I SMS and I was like, don't quit. Yeah. That's what yeah, I was like, yeah. I was like, no, that's what I said yeah. to her. I said, and I remember very well because it was myself, it was our producer, Zamanyu. So we're actually standing outside the toilet, toilets and I, it, it was, it was her, it was the three of us. I said, sisterly advice, don't ever make emotional decisions. Calm down, do it for a week, see how you feel after Friday. And also, you are older than her, so you've got yeah, more yeah, yeah, yeah. You just have a, like a more yeah. like sense. Yeah, no, of course. And you people know. don't, people forget or they don't yeah. know that she was your first guest on your talk show. Yes. Okay. Actually, first guest everywhere on the link. Yes, I on think the link, so. she was yeah, your first yeah, yeah, guest yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so there is some sort of camaraderie that happens no, between the two of you. Absolutely. Yeah. I was, I was honestly, I was genuinely looking forward to it, and I really thought it was going to work. So, but she believed otherwise, and that's okay too. That's fine. Like, that's fine. Yeah. 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 I, I, you know, I, I like what she does with her career as well. So yeah, is there any absolutely. truth that Afternoon Express is talking to you? <laughs> How are you? <laughs> You're so funny. I'm kind of thirsty, guys, eh? Like, <laughs> no, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Anneli, you're so evil. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> oh, my word. No, you didn't. And welcome back to Real Talk with me, Anele. <laughs> There's just so much we've touched on with my guest, Lerato Hayako, today. Uh, from the struggles to making it into the industry uh, to some tough experiences that she's had to endure, which is why we have to touch on this because I, I just loved also the way people supported you after you told us that you, you can't have babies. How did you find that out? Um, Jeez, it's, it's quite a... You see, that, uh, you know, I lost, I've actually lost two children, you know, and um, I've only spoken about the one recently because I think that's the one that affected me the most. Yeah. Because that's when I really wanted to have a child. And um, I've had fibrosis, I've had fibroids and got them removed, but now they've come back again. And you know, they say, you know, it's a bit risky to do this and that and that. So I've kind of removed myself. I don't know, I've blocked the idea of having children completely because of the pain that I went through then when I mm. miscarried. I, I wouldn't even... I wouldn't even put, like, not even on my worst enemy. It's the most painful thing ever, especially when you really, really want to have a child. Mm. Um, but, um, yeah, it's... So, uh, did a doctor say, Lerato, you will never have children? Or are you telling yourself that because you just don't want to go through the pain of it any longer? I think it's both. You know, if you, if you go to a doctor and they say to you, okay, these fibroids are constantly going to be coming back again and you know you having children will be a bit of a risk. And you start in your head, you start believing that you actually, I don't know, it's just a conversation that you have with the, with the doctors. Yeah. I can't have children. I'm not going to have children. I don't want to have children. And... And I know a lot of people have been saying, you can't be saying that, but I'm comfortable, really. I am comfortable saying that. And I mean, I'll go for therapy for that. And I, I see someone and I speak about it and I've completely blocked mm. it out. It's just, it's, 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 it's really painful. Mm. And I don't want to go through it mm. ever again in my life. I don't want to experience it. But I love other people's children. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, are you thinking of adopting or maybe getting a surrogate? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I've, I've been thinking about adoption, but yeah. uh, maybe in two years' time, uh, maybe a little anele here and there. You but know, <laughs> I, or a little, I like it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, that has crossed my mind, but not right now, no. So are you, what are you hell-bent on? Are you hell-bent on having a child with a partner or are you okay that, you know what, even if I'm single, I'm just going to have the child? No, even if I'm single, I'm just going to have a child. I've gone through the phase of wanting to get married. Mm. Uh, and, um, oh, Gonja, you were engaged. Uh, <laughs> why must you be that person? With the rose petals. <laughs> Didn't you write rose uh, petals in the well? You marry me. Oh, no. And do you know what? Do you know what is amazing for me? The fact that he spelled out the U. He didn't just go yes. U. <laughs> so cute. So cute. Bl bless his soul. Yes. Do you guys still talk? Um, <laughs> we do, shame. We, we still, <laughs> no, that. but we do. We're still really, really good friends. 
Um, I love that our breakup was not, uh, it wasn't like a bad breakup where oh, we, okay. we cut all ties. He's still, he's, sometimes I'll be going through something, I actually pick up the phone and phone him, phone him you know, and speak to him, chat to him. He yes. actually is in a relationship though. And I always encourage him to like, you know, propose and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think I, I like having a confidant as, uh, who's an ex yeah, yeah, yeah. is nice because yeah. like you've really been the most intimate with him so no, there's nothing course. you could tell I him mean, that I was that with could him for five them. years yeah. yeah so he knows me very very well he knows me when I was still skinny and poor and whatever struggling skinny aren't you skinny now <laughs> no I'm a size 32 that oh, and yeah. all the size <laughs> and all the size 40 said okay no never bus. mind no, no I'm not I'm definitely not skinny yeah you know? I got booty now which is a great which thing. is a good thing so who's 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 uh, appreciating this booty? <laughs> you are. <laughs> no. <I'm good. laughs> right now, yes, but when you go home? Ah, uh, there's no one at home, Shem. Are you saying that? That's why I'm constantly on Insta Live. <laughs> That's why I'm always on Twitter twenty four seven. Because there's nobody at home. No, I am <laughs> I'm, I'm, so you're I'm single. having fun. So this, no, I'm not single. You're not single, no. but you you can't say you have a boyfriend. There's somebody you are seeing. Yeah. And you know what it is? It makes sense. I just, like, there's just this box that people always expect you to be like, this is my boyfriend. You're like, yeah, no. No, I don't. He's, we're kicking it. Do you know, and we, we're happy. We're hanging. We're having so much fun. And we are, we are good. Like, it's, it's great. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm just, I'm, just I'm, I'm trying to have fun now with relationships. What does he do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he does a lot of things. Logistics. <laughs> does a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> it's a family show. Sorry. No, I'm joking. He's a, he's a, he does a lot of things. <laughs> but he's a great guy. He's an incredible guy who's very understanding with, with my industry. You see, I always look for someone who's really supportive when it comes to, my, uh, comes, uh, comes to me yeah. and relationships in my industry. Someone who understands what I'm doing. Because I work Monday to Sunday. I mean, I just flew in from Cape Town this morning. We had to wake up at 4 a.m. to go do the radio show. So, and a lot of times guys will say, yeah, you know what? No, I'm going to be. I, I, I understand. I love a woman that works until hard. third month. He's yeah, like, no, yeah. I'm out of here. And I can't. Do you yeah. know what? For me, I think it is. It's because men generally don't like to walk into a, a spot and yes. people know that. A lot of people know their woman, right? Yes. Because yes. they don't know oh, how yes. all these guys know yes. you. So now yes. there you are, like, okay, baby, this was my friend. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Go, we are explaining that we got a passenger manifest of I who know. these people are, oh. and then and then you look dodgy, Terrible. you look dicey. Terrible. Terrible. The one guy said to me, uh, one one of my guy friends said to me, I don't know how your guy actually like you know, survives with us, how he can actually accept this. Because you stand on the decks and you DJ and you have all these men looking at you like you're this goddess mm. because you love what you're doing. You have so much passion for it. And also you have guys who are maybe even more good looking or who are... Who got more money. Who got and more money. More character. Or yeah. More character. You know what I mean? So, yeah. But it's just... But how do you focus. manage that? I just do. I just do. I don't know how I do it. I, I, I live and breathe my work, honestly speaking. So I don't really have time to be entertaining a lot of people. But how do you make sure that your man feels needed? Because at the end of the day, I think it's the only way yeah. you're going to. To be honest, I really don't know how I do it. I really don't. I won't lie and say there is something in particular that I do. It's just I just become myself and I tell him this is what I do. So go with the flow. It's either, you know, go with the flow or go the opposite direction. And um, they decide. Most go the opposite direction because it gets really hot in the kitchen. And mm. it's like, now you have someone saying, but you need to drop one gig. Or no, you've got like six gigs this weekend. Why don't you drop one so that we can go to the zoo? Or, and I'm to like, the zoo. listen, honey. I'm trying to move on to a second house, okay? <laughs> I'm trying to be like DJ Euphonic and go to 16 properties. You know uh -huh. what I mean? So, yeah, I need to work. Can you relax? Can so, you yeah. relax? Yeah. Oh, we're out of time, but I could that really sucks. talk to you forever. Yay. Thank you so much for coming through. Thank you for inviting you me. You were so absolutely hot. amazing, and the suit is everything. Thank you. And Just I see a lot of people on Twitter saying it's red, it's orange. It's tangerine. Tangerine. Okay. Ish. There's, there's a different model. Listen, this one's fun. The Rato Khanyako catch her tomorrow. What time is your radio show? 8 to 10. 8 to 10, yes. 8 to 10. No, 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 10 to 12. Ooh, Sorry. 10 to 12. Yeah, yeah. We never know these things. Yeah. 10 to 12 on Metro. She's on Live Amp on Fridays at half past 7. Uh, it is a lot of fun. Go and check it out. Tomorrow, however, you must come back again because we've got Kanye Mbao here for the entire hour. Hater, lover, you know you want to hear what she's got to say. We'll see you tomorrow from the team. Goodbye.